Yes, so we have, we have an extra cell on Shabbos. An extra cell on Shabbos is called, it's called Neshamaya Tera. And, <clears throat> and after Shabbos, so our extra cell, so it leaves us. It leaves us. By the way, it says, it says that, that when it goes up, so then all of the extra cells that came down, so they line up and they have a meeting and they say, and they say, no, so what did you, what did you learn on Shabbos? What did you do on Shabbos? And so you have to, if you're like, if you're, if you don't really celebrate Shabbos, if you don't learn anything exciting, so then your soul is very embarrassed. So you should make sure that every Shabbos you, you're going to have something to share, something to report back to the, to the, to the Matzah Shabbos meeting of extra souls. Okay, so, so this, this moment where our souls go back up, so it's a little bit of a down, a little bit of a down, and so we take, we take spices to revive our soul, okay? Because our soul is depressed because it just lost a little bit of itself. So we take something to revive our soul. What's it mean? So what's it mean to revive our soul? So it says an interesting thing in Chazal that the smell, the sense of smell is unique. The sense of smell is unique. The fact that, that the soul, that the soul gets benefit from smell, from scent. Okay, um, why is it that why is it that the soul is connected to the smell more than anything else? So it has a very interesting idea that <clears throat> every other sense besides smell were involved in the sin of the tree of knowledge. Okay, because because what happened with the tree of knowledge? The first of all, that the snake the snake pushed Chava into the tree, and that was the beginning of the sin. And then so that's the sense of touch and then the Chava obviously ate from the tree. That was the sense of taste. And then she told Adam to take as well. And that was the sense of hearing was, was, also, was also impaired. And the, and uh, oh, I forgot, I forgot that. And before she ate, she saw, she, she saw the fruit and she says there was Nechmad Lamara. And so it was very enticing to her eyes. Okay, so she messed up with her sense of taste. She messed up, she messed up with the sense of touch. He messed up with the sense of hearing, and the um, and the only so the only sense sense which was left untouched and scathed was the sense of smell, and that's why sense of smell um, for all eternity is considered a a spiritual a spiritual sense. Um, and um, there's a lot to say about this, but um, the idea of incense, the idea of incense in the base of Mikdash, the idea of incense as a way of as a way of connecting spiritually um, is sourced in this um, and Yom Kippur, and Yom Kippur. So we, in many synagogues, they have a custom to have lots of, lots of spices and scents, lots of, um, lots of uh, things to smell. And the reason is because even though on, on Yom Kippur, we're trying to minimize our physical pleasure, but we're trying to maximize our spiritual pleasure. And we look at smell as a spiritual pleasure, not a physical pleasure, okay? So, so that's why, <clears throat> so that's why we take the smell on Matzah Shabbat, take the smell on Matzah Shabbat, that it should um, to, to, um, to comfort us, to revive our soul and to, to be a, a pick me up um, to, because we're down because Shabbat is going away. Um, so now, so th and this is a time sensitive thing that the only time that you can make the bracha on Barai Mene is only on is only on Saturday night because after Saturday night we say, okay, whatever, you got used to it already. Okay? It's not about it's specifically about reviving from a state of depression. So therefore it's time sensitive, it's only relevant for Saturday night. Okay. Why do we make the bracha of Bari Mir Ha'esh? Why do we make the blessing on the, the blessing on the fire? So this is based on based on the Midrash. The Midrash says that Saturday night is when Adam created fire. This is when Adam created fire. So, so to commemorate the fact that he, that, he, that he created fire, so we're making this blessing on Saturday night, um, which is a very beautiful thing because, because the beginning of creation, the first day of creation, what was the first thing that God created? God created light. And, and God's cycle was from Sunday to Shabbos. And then right as soon as God's cycle finishes, then it comes our cycle. And our cycle, is it is 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 expressed with Adam's creation of fire. Like it was it was on Saturday night that he had the wisdom to put two rocks together to create a fire. And so that um, that creating fire represents 
man's creative, uh, man's creative energy, man's creative uh, power in this world. And to commemorate, uh, commemorate that first creation of man, so <clears throat> they made a bracha, they instituted the bracha that we should make. So this is, what is, what is, what is it symbolizing? What are we trying to connect with? When we're saying bar mera ish, this is this is um, this is our this is taking on the challenge of the next week. Okay, this is our expressing that yeah, let's do something. Let's make fire in this coming week. We have the energy, we have the power, and <clears throat> we have the ability to 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 make the world into a better place. So that's the that's the symbolism of of bar mera ish. Even though we we we, tell, we thank Hashem for creating this, but really what we're thanking Hashem for is for thanking Him for to give us the ability to make fire. Okay. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so that's so so that's why also the, the that um this bracha of um, the fire baranara ish. It's also a it's also a time sensitive blessing. That was what time says the lesson because it's specifically on Saturday night that that Adam created created fire. So that's why after Saturday night you cannot make the bracha anymore. Okay, so it's only so the only time that you can make the full the only time that you can make the full havdalah is only if it's Saturday night. Um, <clears throat> there's one time that so so we have we have a havdalah of of just we have a havdalah of just of just Bari Piragafen and Hamavdo, and we have and we have the Havdalah of, of the four. When else do we only say, when else do we only say the first and the last? We skip the middle. So first of all, after a Chag, <coughs> after a Chag, so we also skip the Bissamim, and we also skip the, we also skip the candle. These are specific to Saturday night. Um, so after a Chag, we don't, after we, by the way, we also we make <coughs> we make Abdallah on every on every after any holiday that that you that you can't that you can't do malacha. Like so, let's say after the first day of Passover, so we're, we're going to say Abdallah, or if you're outside of Israel, the first two days of Passover. So after these after that chag, you're going to say Abdallah, even though Passover isn't over yet, right? You're going to have you still have Cholamoid, you still have the end of Passover. So, but nevertheless, we say Havdalah because it's the end of the holiday, the holiday that we're keeping by not doing Malacha. So that's the end of that. So it, it, it requires its own Havdalah. 